Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where it is finally time to take my Heritage Focus RS onto the Nürburgring. Yes, it's a rite of passage for all of the Shmi mobiles. We have driven previously with my AMG GTR Roadster. In fact, we've been out with some of the unusual cars in my garage, including the G63, the Taycan, all of the supercars, the Senna, the Ford GT, the SF90, the STO, the GT Black Series, you name it. But somehow, despite owning it for, well, the best part of four years, my Heritage Edition Focus RS has never been on the ring. And I'm not even sure if any of the 50 heritage editions have ever been for a lap of the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Well, today is tourist and fart, and we're gonna head out for some laps, have some fun, a gentle lap to get us started, a faster lap to follow, but let's enjoy this, doing its maiden outings here at the Green Hell. If you're wondering about the GTR Roadster being out here, we have brought it here to go to Opus because we needed to make a change to it. I say needed to make a change, I wanted to make a change. And that was, if you come through here, to put its normal seats back in, to return it to the regular AMG performance seats with which it was provided. Those are back in, the buckets are out. We're gonna be taking the buckets home, in fact, with the Focus RS, but they're out of the car here at Apex just for the moment. And then those will probably end up in my C63 Black Series, but that's a story for another day. Let me close that back up for the moment. It's so fun to just do that from the key. It feels easy, it feels cool. If I sell this car, I'm gonna miss it. No doubt about that. It's a fabulous car, but needs must and all of that. Anyway, today is not about the GTR Roadster. Today is about the Focus RS. And one topic you might be wondering about if you followed the journey out with the car, what about the tire pressures, given we had a little issue with this one? So before we departed, well, actually, as we departed, this tire was significantly low. In PSI, because that's just what we were measuring in at the time, it was down from the standard around 42 that it should be on the back to 23. Now, we took it off the car, did all kind of water tests to try and work out if there were any leaks or any damage to the tire. Couldn't find anything in the tread, nothing around the seal, nothing wrong with the valve. But I think during the process, we must have actually been able to clean it because after inflating it back up, it stayed up for the whole of the journey to date. And we've driven, I guess, about 500 miles with it since, and it's not lost even a single PSI. So that seems like it's all fine. I do need to deflate the tires slightly because they've been ever so slightly overinflated for the journey. So these days, pretty much always carrying one of these things with me so I can get that done. And then we'll grab some cameras, gear ourselves up. I've got my lap ticket topped up, ready to go. Don't know how busy it's gonna be this evening at all. It doesn't feel too busy here in Nürburgring at the moment. So we might get lucky and have a pretty empty outing during today's TF and go do the first laps with this thing. It is time, the sun is out. Let's pop the car into the right settings. We will go into, actually we should go all the way into racetrack mode don't really drive this in racetrack mode all that often, which puts the suspension into a firmer setup, just sharpens everything, probably more pops and crackles from the exhaust in the process. This car is completely mechanically bone stock. The Heritage Edition effectively has the Mountune FPM 375 upgrade from factory. I mean, it has exactly that. So 25 horsepower over the standard Focus RS up to 375, different intake system, but the same stock back box and I've never changed it. We've got stock brakes, we've got stock everything because it's a wonderful collector car. And you get this little whistle out of it. You can actually get a sound suppression chamber if you want to stop that. But to be honest, I quite like it. It's a distinct thing about the character of this particular car. So it's a lovely day. It's got a lot busier in the build up to TF opening. I will say, as I always do, that TF are tourist drives, effectively tolls on a public road, which means overtaking only on the left following road rules, just de-restricted and with permission to drive at speed around the green hell on this 21 kilometer loop. One of the most famous bits of road anywhere in the world here in the Eiffel Mountains in Germany, somewhere where I've now driven in the region of 130 laps. I think it might be exactly 130 between many different cars, but this is one that until today has not been around. It has been on the continent a few times before, but it's time to pop the Nürburgring cherry for it, go have some fun and enjoy the lap. So let's make our way down. I've got my pole card at the ready. It's a bit on arrival and we'll go from there. Everything has just literally now opened, which is very, very convenient. There are a lot of cars promptly making their way out. So we come down towards 
the toll barriers at the entry to the Nürburgring Nordschleife. We do have gates on both sides. We'll pop through here and then it will be full go time. Let's go through. Okay, through the chicane, quite an aggressive chicane setup. Through the cones and away we go. All the way up through the revs, you get this little flash on the dashboard with the RS graphic when it's time to shift. We make our way out onto the Nürburgring Nordschleife lap and there is a mini bus in front of us. Literally doing a lap in a bus. That's actually quite funny. As we follow this 911 turbo convertible into the first sections. All right, off we go. The join from the GP track. As we head through, get some squeaks from the brakes. Obviously driving with a manual is a different challenge to driving in a car with an auto box. But I am fairly familiar with where this place goes, which certainly helps. We've got the four-wheel drive system in the Focus RS, which certainly allows it to have a bit of fun and play around as well. But obviously helps an awful lot when it comes to lapping somewhere like this. Getting the tire squeal as we go through Hudson back through these areas. In fact, we're getting quite a lot of squeal out of it already. We can take the curbs fairly aggressively today, I think. Got a bike up ahead, always got to watch out. Don't want to cause any danger to them or to us. We've got a faster BMW E92 M3 behind, so I'll pull out of the way of him. If he's got the power on the straight to pull away from me, I'm going to have to back off and pull out myself. Around we go, past the bike, past the TT. It's looking quite busy up here. We've got another TT from Spain, international plates galore. Lots and lots of BMWs, new and old, as we make our way around. The very, very fast section here. Up into fifth gear, 200 kilometers an hour, 210, 220. So you can light over the crest, come to Schwedenkreuz, off camber, clinging on. This thing does a very nice job of this. Heavy on the brakes through Arenberg, <laughs> feeling it dancing around. Use the exit curbs. Now we're down towards the foxhole. God, I'm loving this. Watch for the compression. Oh, can we use the curves here? And now forced. And away we go. So this might be the first Heritage Focus RS to be doing a lap. And I have to say, there is something for doing it this way. It's a lot of fun. Got one of the Apex taxi cars. Slightly offline here. So we come round and down towards the miss hit miss. Missed the first, hit the second Apex missed the third, use the width of the track as we come then to the siphon, slowest section of the Nürburgring. <laughs> Feeling the G-forces through there, breaking down the hill. Oh, and we back it off a touch as we go through the speed limited section. All right, back up the hill. Use that power. Oh, this is cool. Pull to the right. Look what's coming, look what's coming. The Opus GT Black Series are oh, so cool. They do lots of engineering and testing here at the ring. One of the reasons why I went for their upgrades for mine to make sure that it's solid. If you want to enjoy driving these things and driving it properly, look, it's gone. It's absolutely gone. That is fabulous. So cool. I've thoroughly enjoyed doing laps with mine. Gosh. It's a bit of an adrenaline rush and a half. It just moves and dances around. 
and this is on the stock Pilot Super Sports. You can put some Sport Cup 2s on it like I had on my Red RS before. But I tell you what, I partly wish that I had the knowledge and experience of the ring that I have now back when I owned the Red RS so that I could make a little bit more of it. Because now that I at least know where it goes, I have a pretty good understanding and experience of it. So we've gone through Style Strecker and up towards the carousel. Completely empty for us here, nothing behind, nothing in front. I'm gonna take it fairly easy as we drop onto the concrete stones. Keep it tight, keep your wheels on the concrete slabs. Don't go out too early and back on the power. As we continue from here, And I tell you what, the other thing I often say when I go in a slightly slower car around the Nürburgring is you've got so much more time to take it in than when you're in something like the GT Black Series because you can look and you can see the surroundings and this section up towards Hoa Act often confuses me. The highest section, my ears are actually popping at the moment as we come up towards the top and begin the descent back down the other side still with pretty empty track to be honest. I'm trying to work out exactly what gear I want to be in at each stage. We'll do the uh, Whitherman challenge and enjoy those sections of curb. Ice back, so we're then going to come down towards Brinchen, the double apex here, looking fairly busy down there, keep it in third gear, use the curves on the runoff, and we come up the other side. Always got to watch out here, YouTube corner. Voice crack from excitement as we're catching up with a 911. That's always quite fun as well. 991. Watch out for the little jump. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you ever so much, very kind. It's always very fast. And in this car, it is no different. Wow. My goodness. I think it's time to start slowing it down, let those brakes cool. Not trying to be a hero here. Definitely want to get it back home tonight with no issues. But what a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous lap out with this thing. So we go into Little Carousel. Tuck it in, keep out of the way of the chap behind who's certainly wanting to go a little bit quicker through this last section than I am. <laughs> M3's galore as we go through Galgenkopf. Well, that was pretty epic, to be honest. That was really epic. What a cool car to do it with. What a cool car for a lap of the Nürburgring. Oh my goodness. I liked it in that setup in track mode. I really liked that. That did a very, very nice job. Handled it really, really well. And yeah, I'm gonna pull in for just a second of chill and uh, we'll go from there. A quick tire deflation later and we are back for round two. The front tires had gone up immensely, to be honest, up about 10 PSI in a single lap. So those are now deflated back down towards safe pressures for the purpose. And we're going back through for lap number two with the RS. We still have what it says is a full gauge of petrol, which is quite unlikely. Given a lap like this, you're driving fairly aggressively. Although fuel here is genuinely a quarter cheaper than in the UK. It's a massive difference. That was a pleasant surprise, but um, I think we're a bit stuck here across every lane. Nobody's managing with their tickets, unfortunately. Right, so this means, because we've been waiting there for a minute or so, other than the two cars in front of us, there's actually not gonna be anything for ages, which is a delight, an unintentional benefit right now for a fairly empty Nordschleifer. Life. I'm gonna keep the settings exactly as they are. It puts traction into a sporty setting when you go into racetrack mode, which to be honest, has done the job nicely. Four wheel drive, so no major dramas on that front. But let's go out here, head past the Mini, up to the red line, get a squeal into second, into third, got a swift up ahead of us, under the bridge, into fourth, so 
we've got Tiergarten in some of the supercars. It's 230 odd kilometers per hour here, 180 in this. Just about 120 miles an hour, 115 miles an hour. Tell you what, it is fun to blip some shifts. They are sliding around, dancing around. I'm gonna drop it down in second here so I get some good acceleration on the exit. Thank you. All right, Sabine Schmitz curver. And we are off. All right, we're not in the supercar, can't go kind of flat through there. Gotta be a little bit realistic. All right, we can use some of these curves, not all of them, and some of the exits as well. This time we have a clear run up through here, full throttle up towards the top. Well, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a dab, drop it down to fourth, keep things composed and settled as we go for this run through here. In the GTR Pro, I remember getting very close to 300 kilometers an hour here. In this car, you're not gonna see that, but it is certainly quick. Gosh, it looks a bit cloudy and miserable up ahead. <laughs> Gonna keep it in fifth for the off camber. Sometimes it's better to be in higher gear, keep the car composed. Heavy braking down to Arenberg, straight into third. And we are away down to the Foxhole. I'm waiting for some 992 GT3 or something really cool to come past, but we've got a yellow flag. So we have to back off, take it easily through the foxhole, you don't know what's gonna be the problem ahead. And away we can go then, back out, unleashed onto the Nürburgring. Gosh, the braking is actually quite fun. There's so much more play in it than I'm used to. Supercars obviously just planted, absolutely sure-footed. Now last time I was a little bit quick into the siphon, I'm not gonna lie, we'll drop a gear there, drop it into second for the tight part here. That's cleaner. That's more like what you want to do. Away we go up the hill. This is where you want to carry some momentum through the corner if you can. Something about this car for me just works really well. The feel of the shifter, the whole car to be honest. And it's super exciting to be driving something that is actually really quite special. Like I said, is it the only Heritage RS that's done? A Nürburgring lap? I don't know, but it certainly is one that has. Pass the 3 Series Compact through the ladder links. Open it up. Throw it through here. You can almost certainly do that flat, but I just did a small little lift to keep myself comfortable. Literally foot flat all the way through here, through the next corners through here as well. Gonna give a bit of break here. Uphill, but you can carry so much more speed through there than you initially think you can. Just when you're in a less powerful car, it makes so much difference how well you carry the speed through it. As we come towards Style Strecker. This is so much more involving. I'll tell you what I'm looking forward to, as I have a 992 GT3 right behind me, I'm looking forward to being here with my Clio V6 when that project is finished, when I can bring that for its first Nürburgring lap. So I am gonna to tuck to the right, and let the GT3 <laughs> fly through. That sounds good. Yeah, I'm not gonna try and keep up. With that in the slightest. Well, I tell you what, it'd be interesting to see how well I could. But yeah, a lot more power. I mean, over 100 horsepower more. Lighter, probably. A lot more downforce. Stickier tires. Everything. I tell you what, it's not really pulling away as fast as I thought it might. Certainly not in the way the GT Black Series did. 
Oh, I love that. <laughs> if you're gonna do a ton of laps, you don't wanna go so aggressively with the curves. If you're only doing it once or twice, like this, quick outing, it's all good. Fun and games. The double apexes, nice back. God, we got some tires squealing away here. Pass through Brunchen without heavy drama. It's fun how much you can play around with here. Timing your shifts, just being a little bit more in control of it all as we have the little jump and then fast flow through after that. Got something bearing in behind us. We've got a little bit of traffic here to the end. Do you know what? That is gonna be my call to actually just chill. It's super busy in front. Whenever it's like this, three or four cars right in front on the last sections of the track, I always go down the chill path because there's no point in frying your brakes just to sit in a bit of traffic at the end anyway. Now that E92 comes past us. Yeah. Woo. That has all been a lot of fun. Like a lot of fun. And as I've said, a Schmiermobile must drive a lap of the Nürburgring. It has to be done. It has now been done with this one. It has put in its maiden laps with big smiles and we're going to make it safely around towards the end. It's all about having fun, not trying to be a one lap hero. You can't time or anything, it's a public road, it would be illegal to do so during TF. It's just about enjoying the occasion, enjoying the venue, enjoying the experience, having an amazing time. And that is exactly what it's been. So there we go. Let's head back towards base. Once we've made it round the last corner, there we go, past Galgenkopf. As I said, we've got a bit of a traffic jam down there for the exit, so perfectly done, if I can say so myself, to now just cruise it on home, cruise it on back. Always recommended if you're here, don't forget to prepare and save your brakes, because if you go full on to the end and then you sit in a traffic jam, you're gonna to toast your brakes. You're gonna to toast the discs, overheat the pads, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth the hassle, the headache, and everything that comes with it. So yeah, there we go, that was epic. We are back where we began then. What a lot of fun with this thing. The mission was to bring it over to the continent to get some laps of the Nürburgring under its belt. It joins the list of Schmiermobiles that have been around, not all that many that haven't. But now we need to get it prepared for the onward journey, reinflate the tires a little bit, although with the temperatures in them still very high, you have to overinflate them and kind of work that out as we go. We've got cars pretty much all around us, hopping in and out, moving left, right, and center. This car is obviously going to be the transport wagon for the bucket seats that we've taken out of the GTR Roadster. So we need to get the seats folded down, get those loaded up and safely packaged and prepared for the drive that we have ahead and then get both of these back home tonight. That's the plan. You can come here, drive out, do some laps in the evening, pack up and then go back home and arrive back at home in the early hours of the morning. Maybe one day that'd be quite fun, like a ring dash, a proper ring dash. But for now, the Heritage RS has popped its Nürburgring cherry. We've done the laps with it. It was epic fun, an awesome, awesome car to drive here. Four wheel drive, manual gearbox. Things just going a touch slower than with some of the supercars, even though it was mega when the Opus GT Black Series went flying on past us. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching. As always guys, I appreciate your support an awful lot and I'll see you again next time. Cheers.